guys, Shinobi Whisper is here again. And... Hang on. I just gotta fix something. <laughs> Technical difficulties, folks. <laughs> okay. Uh, right, where did I leave off? Okay. Next was Ghost Recon. <clears throat> the original Godzilla was done in 1954, so I'd much rather prefer the Japanese version to the American version that they made with uh, Raymond Burr, I think it is. But anyways, Japanese versions are always the best, just like Seven Samurai. Magnificent Seven. I'd much rather prefer <laughs> watching Seven Samurai to Magnificent Seven. I just find Samurai more interesting than Cowboys. <coughs> <coughs> Sabbath, the Ronnie James Dio era, <laughs> Heaven and Hell, Neon Knights, love that song, Neon Knights. <laughs> Next, we have some Rob Zombie. <laughs> Next to that is the 
housing soundtrack Alucard Alucard <laughs> and housing soundtrack number two Sir Degra Helsing sorry the image is blurred let me see if I can focus that
rendition of A Boy Named Sue by Johnny Cash, but this one is called uh, A Boy, I mean, A Girl Named Johnny Cash. Yeah, that's a funny rendition of A Boy Named Sue. Next is a Jessica Rabbit song.
Dragon <laughs> album. Next is the King Arthur soundtrack. Not a well liked movie by most people, but I actually haven't watched it in a long time either. And if you want my opinion, they should have done a trilogy. At least a building up type setting where you would want to see the characters again, like Lancelot and Arthur and Galahad and uh, Bors and Tristan. It should have showed, you know, <laughs> more of their adventures instead of piled into one movie. <laughs> if you guys agree about that. <laughs> Next is Dick Dale, the Dale Tunes. He did the opening song for Pulp Fiction, or rather, <laughs> uh, Quentin Tarantino used his song for the opening movie of Pulp Fiction. Next is the Cowboy Bebop movie. Knock on Heaven's door. Uh, next is some more Kodo drummers. Yodori. It's probably my favorite Japanese. Traditional Japanese type of drum song. Next is the Kung Fu Hustle soundtrack. <laughs> I love this soundtrack as it's filled with uh, traditional Japanese. Uh, Excuse me. <laughs> Traditional Chinese music. I know. I really messed up there. Uh, but yeah, I love Stephen Chow's movies. They're just awesome beyond belief. And I haven't seen uh, a lot of more recent ones from him. But uh, he's kind of like. Edgar Wright of uh, China, I like to think, because Edgar Wright, he does Shaun of the Dead, uh, Hot Fuzz, and At World's End, Scott Pilgrim, and those other type movies, and I think an equivalency in terms of comedy that Stephen Chow and Edgar Wright are kind of from the same cloth <laughs> as a metaphor to use but I think that would be awesome if Stephen Chow and Edgar Wright did a movie together that would be pretty cool because we need more of that collaboration in a sense with uh, collaborating with other cultures and it would, yeah, it would just be awesome to see that happen. I don't know what they would make, <laughs> but yeah, I guess it would have to be like a modern type movie if they did one. We'll see. Next is La Giviata. Did I say that right? Piamo. Yeah, it's a kind of an opera-ish classical song. <laughs> oh yeah, one of my favorite 80s movies is Lady Hawk. And I really hope that someday they'll revitalize this story and maybe make it into an anime type thing. Or if anything, you know, make it an anime, because that would make a pretty cool storyline. If you guys haven't seen this uh, classic 80s movie, go see it. It's with uh, Matthew Broderick, Michelle Pfeiffer, uh, Rutger Hauer, I think I'm saying his name right, he plays in the bar. And uh, it's a pretty beautiful story, and I love it. Death. <laughs> oh, 
but also has Alfred Molina in it and a short appearance. But, you know. Okay, next we have Laputa Gas on the Sky. Yay! Another Miyazaki soundtrack. <laughs> I love Miyazaki. And it's another <coughs> Position by Joe Asaishi. He's done pretty much all of Miyazaki's films. It's just like John Williams has done all the music for George Lucas's movies. Kind of in a sense they stick together like birds of a feather. That's the wrong term. <laughs> it's birds of Jeez. All right. Moving on. Next is Legend of Dragoon. It's just a trailer type music song. Next we have the Les Miserables. Uh, this is the some Marilyn Monroe songs. I haven't listened to one, that one in a while, but yeah. And another Marilyn Monroe album right there. Next we have the Marvel vs. Capcom 3 soundtrack, but only the Deadpool song that's played. 
as the original themes that were used in um, the Super Nintendo version of Mega Man X mm -hmm. and some of those original themes were played in this Maverick Hunter X and kind of remixed in its own way, which is really cool. Next we have Medieval Total War soundtrack. some holy diver on my mp3. some pirate tunes on here, but it's Muppet Treasure Island. <laughs> oh man, I used to sing Professional Pirate so many times. Next we have some Indian, Native American Indian songs. And yeah, they're just Joe. 
Saishi. some more Voltaire and the album Wookie Spooky. Cannibal Buffet is a good song. And Day of the Dead. Next we have some more 80s metal by Rat. And the song is I Am Insane. Um, 
Rammstein. It's another good. series of Samurai 7 based off of Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai. <laughs> yeah, they just kind of flipped the title around on that one. But let's see if I can name off these silhouette figures. Katsushiro, I think. Kikuchio. Kyuzo which is my favorite samurai. He's the silent samurai and doesn't talk that much. Just like me. Kanbei Sama, who is the leader of the group. What's his name? Jack soundtrack. Then we have the Sanjuro soundtrack, which is a, an Akira Kurosawa film. And for those of you who want to be educated a little, um, Sanjuro and Yujimbo are represent a lone samurai just traveling. Japanese countryside and various towns and Clint Eastwood himself said that he based this uh, man with no name type character for fistful of dollars and for a few dollars more off of the character Yojimbo and Sunjuro and main character who played, I mean, the main actor who plays the original Japanese role is um, an actor, Toshiro Mufune, and he's probably my favorite Japanese actor. Um, anyways, he played the role of the nameless samurai, but went by the name of Senjuro in the second film. And, uh, Yojimbo in the first film. So basically you can tell the similarity between those characters and Clint Eastwood's uh, Man With No Name. That thing. It's interesting how American, uh, the American film industry copied a lot of the original Japanese or action or comedies so in a way we owe a lot to the Japanese 
Thanks for giving, or not giving, <laughs> showing original pieces of artwork and ways of improving, I guess, the We have a song by Vera Lynn called We'll Meet Again, which is featured in the Doctor Strange Love movie. Next, one of my favorite characters of all time, Raziel and Soul Reaver soundtrack. I think it's done by a guy. on this one. Next we have 
Chester. Danny K. I like old fashioned movies. Next is the Crow soundtrack by Graham Fell. And another Crow movie City of Angels. find a City of Angels poster like this. And I think Vincent Perez played not Eric Draven, but um, his name was Ash in that film. I hear they're going to make remake feel about that just yet. Next we have some more Batman, The Dark Knight Rises soundtrack. And I made my own little Batman album here. Ultimate Batman theme. Next we have some more Voltaire, When You're Evil. Next is the Hidden Blade soundtrack. And the Hidden Fortress soundtrack. Another Akira Kurosawa movie. And the inspiration for George Lucas to make Star Wars. The Hobbit soundtrack.
Richmond.
comedy movie of all time. Next we have some Meko Kashi. that 